Hey everyone, this is Dave with another dark table tutorial. Um, what you've got in front of you is a shot that I made at Castle Island in South Boston. Um, as you can see up here, it's 175 and a half seconds, so close to three minutes. Um, got some nice streaking in the clouds. Already did a bunch of work on it, and when I was done with it, I thought something's not right, and I don't know what it is. And then I realized it's this right out here. Um, I was thinking at F16 that I wanted everything to be nice and sharp since the water was going to be blurred and the clouds were going to be blurred. But it turns out I don't want this as sharp as it is. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. And uh, the reason I decided to do this tutorial um, was to show you how to combine some masks. So first place we would go is oops, to low pass. I've already got one for color, so I'm going to start a new instance. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and do a drawn mask. So the first way, um, actually I'm just going to do it the, the way I like the most. We're going to start with a gradient. The reason I'm using a gradient is because I think, oh, wrong way, I think this in focus is fine. Maybe out of focus just a little bit. Because um, it just doesn't make sense, I think, for the this sort of depth of field that this would definitely be uh, somewhat in focus. So by the time I get out here, it's still pretty blurry, and I don't like this stuff being as blurry as it is, and obviously I don't want this stuff blurry. Um, so I think I'm going to change my radius to 8, and that might be better. Um, but what I need to do is just sort of blur this area here and the gradient's not getting it done. So I'm going to add a path. Add the path right along here. So about there. There. Now let's take a look at the mask and see what we get. Not what I wanted. We have the gradient and we have the drawn mask, but what I really need is the gradient inside the drawn mask. So the way we do that is over here in Mask Manager. Um, we expand group low pass one. We find gradient and path. So if we click on gradient, we only see the gradient. If we click on path, we only see the path. Now if we right click on path, we're going to pick mode intersection and it's going to apply the effect wherever the two drawn masks intersect which is exactly what I want. Boom. So there we have a gradient inside a drawn mask. Um, this was incredibly helpful to me once I figured this out and I think Harry Durgan did a video on it. Um, if I can find it, I'll link to it. That inspired me to, to make this video and to realize all right, this is a thing that I can do. Um, so let's have a look at the final product here. Turn off the mask. Turn off the lines. And we can see before and after. And I'm not quite where I want to be here. So I'll grab this. Bring it up. Grab this. Bring it up. And that'll probably get me what I want. Pull these in just a bit. Turn off the drawn mask. Back out. And 
I think that gets what I want. Might not be perfect because now some of this, yeah, some of this is too sharp. So let's fix that. Let's pull this all the way to the end there. Turn it off. And now let's see what we get. That looks much better. Um, I was on a 35 millimeter and F16. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I know I was thinking I wanted all of this sharp and in focus. Turns out I didn't. So Dark Table thankfully gives me the tools to have the control to make the adjustments that I wanted. And to me, to my eye, I feel like when this is sharp, everything up front looks perfectly sharp. But when I turn it on, once this blurs, nothing happens technically to the stuff up front, but it feels like it looks sharper. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons I like long exposure. You get water and sky that's blurred and the things that are sharp look that much sharper for it. Um, so that was all quick video this time. I'm working on uh, a video on sharpening. Um, what I'd like to do and ask you guys to, to help out if you can, um, I've been looking at a lot of Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials on YouTube and other places. Um, I've got a membership to lynda.com through my local library. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there. And I find when I watch some of these pros doing their normal workflow where they start off in Lightroom and then they edit it in Photoshop and they're just doing some levels adjustments or curve adjustments and then making masks and painting things on. It looks really tedious. And I realized Darktable has all of that stuff built into it. It has Lightroom and it has Photoshop. So what I'm wondering, what I'm hoping you guys are willing to do is if you come across a video and you want to see how would this work in Darktable alone, let me know. Comments below or hit me up on um, Google Plus or if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I'll put all those links in the in the description below, and I'll do my best to sort of port those tutorials over to Darktable. Um, one guy that I've liked a lot his work um, through the Lynda.com library is Ben Long. He's a great photographer, but he's a really exceptional teacher. If you can. Uh, get a lynda.com membership through your local public library, I would encourage you to um, take advantage of that and go and watch all the Ben Long videos on lynda.com. Anyway, again, that's all for this one. Thanks so much for the encouragement. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you want to comment, make a comment down below. Uh, and I'd love it if you guys would subscribe. And that's all for now. Have a great night.